Hello everyone, my name is Juran Skrzypek and this is a basic statistics course. Stay tuned, watch the video. Today we are going to discuss the basic definitions and the basic mathematical tools. The topics of today's lesson are statistics definitions, the differences between a relation and a sample, what does statistical variable mean, the examples of statistical series, the basic mathematical tools, operator of the sum and the operator of the product, and at the end, interval distribution series. Let's start. What does statistics mean? What is your imagination about the statistics? Who is a statistician? What is his job? It's the right time to reveal the mystery. What is the definition of statistics? Definition one goes first. Statistics is a science dealing with the methods of testing the regularities that occur in large collectivities. Yes, so we are talking about methods statistical measures that helps us help us in testing the regularities different phenomena that can be expressed by numbers and this phenomena occur in large collectivities yes so the dimension the size of this phenomena are large so we need to utilize some mathematical tools here definition 2 refers to the statistical process statistics is the study of the collection analysis yes so it means to make some computations interpretation of statistical measures presentation yes to make a graph or a table and organization of data and the last one statistics refers to classified facts representing the conditions of a people in a state especially the facts that can be stated in numbers or any other tabular or classified arrangement yeah so this is the quintessence of statistics so making computations making interpretations and present the results in a convenient form yes that is understandable to wide audience. Statistics is very comprehensive and extensive science. Therefore, we usually divide statistics into two basic fields of knowledge, descriptive statistics and mathematical statistics. What is a fundamental difference between both types of statistics. In descriptive statistics, we have an opportunity to investigate the entire population. In other words, it means that we are able to investigate all statistical units that we want. So our research is complex is sufficient yeah uh, on the other hand 
in mathematical statistics, we are quite limited in our research. Yeah. So we are able to examine only a small subset, a small um, piece of a population. Yeah, this is a population and in mathematical statistics we are able to examine only a small piece of the population and this small piece is called a sample yeah so we choose a small sample from the entire population making some computations of the statistical measures and after that we transform conclusions to the whole population yeah but yes we know that we have investigated only a small subset so we operate in conditions of a certain probability so we are not 100% sure about the results yes so mathematical statistics is based on theory of the probability and this is the main difference between descriptive and mathematical statistics now let's talk about the differences between population and a sample as I, as I said before population is a collection of all statistical units that are examined in the point of view of different criteria I must stress here that um, population doesn't always mean the country's population, the population of the world, no. The border, the borders, the size of the population depends depend on the idea and the abilities of the researcher. For example, I want to investigate earnings of my colleagues, academic teachers, here in Jagiellonian University, yeah? So here we have teachers, academic teachers of Jagiellonian University and I don't transfer re the results, the conclusions to the entire population of all academic teachers in Poland, for example, yeah? So I don't make any inference here. So here, teachers of, the academic teachers of Jagiellonian University, of the Jagiellonian University, are my population, yeah? Second example, here we have energy sector and I want to examine uh, energy sector uh, through the point of view of earnings for example, value added. Yes, here we have energy sector. Okay, and I investigate firms of energy sector in point of view of uh, earnings and I don't make any uh, transfers of my results to the whole economy to another sectors of the economy so if I don't do that energy sector is my 
population. A sample is a group of or a subset of the entire population which is needed to make an inference to the whole population. So here we choose only a small subset. Yes, we have um, in statistics we have um, a few different um, methods of cho choosing the sample. Yeah, we choose the sample. Here we, on the basis of the sample, we are able to make some uh, computations and we transfer the results to the entire population on the basis on the theory of the probability. We are not certain here, yes, because um, our sample, our sample, maybe, uh, maybe uh, doesn't represent the entire population well, yes. Maybe it's a wrong sample, so the sample is charged by some error yes so our results can be fake yes so we operate here by uh, a certain probability and at the end the population size is the number of statistical units belonging to the population of the sample so first uh, statistical symbol is N. It determines the population size. Here we have first exercise. Try to prejudge in which situation we have a population, in which situation we have a sample it's your task let's start data analysis process here you have next stages of our data analysis process we are here at this stage on the basis on the previous um, facts we know how to define population and sample let's come back to the previous stage now we are going to formulate the research problem research problem research problem is strongly mm, connected with different criteria that can describe our population or sample and these criteria are called the variables so we can describe the population or a certain phenomenon through a prism of different of various variables a variable is a attribute a simple feature of a single object so it is age weight seniority incomes and much much more our variables statistical variables uh, can be divided, can be split into two basic types Quanta quantitative variables so can, these kind of variables can be expressed by numbers so they are measurable and qualitative 
statistical variables. They can't be expressed by numbers. They are immeasurable. Quantitative variables are discrete and continuous variables. Qualitative variables are ordinal and nominal variables. To start our considerations by a description of quantitative statistical measures. As I said before, they can be split into two categories, discrete uh, variables and continuous variables. Discrete variables change in a discontinuously way. What does it mean? This can discontinuously way, as it's hard to pronounce that. Uh, it means that in a certain range, in a certain interval, for example, from A to B, our discrete variable can take only a um, specific set of values, a specific set of several values, like x1, x2, maybe an x3. Yes, so in that interval, our discrete variable can take only a several values so the values change the values change in discontinuously way because between between these values uh, we don't have any other values of our discrete variable yeah so we jump from one value to another there is nothing between the uh, between the defined values of our discrete attribute on the other hand we have the we have continuous attributes yes they change in a continuously way so it means that in the t in the interval between a and b our statistical variable which has continuous character can contain every value between a and b this one this one this one and maybe this one Yes, we are not limited in taking uh, values of our continuous variable. Yes, so we can, in other words, we can say that our um, uh, uh, continuous variable takes various values of the set of real numbers. Yeah, between A and B. Now let's move on to qualitative statistical variables. Uh, we distinguish two types of qualitative statistical variables, ordinal and nominal ones. Ordin in, no, in ordinal uh, statistical variables, we can take a um, specific order or gradation in our statistical variable. For example, what do you think about product, product A? It is worse, same or better than, than product B? Yes, so here we have a gradation. And in nominal statistical variables, 
we have no gradation no order yes so it uh, it is used for a simple description of an object for example the origin of the people yeah village or town yes so there is no gradation town is better than village village is better than a town yes we can't prejudge in that terms which which object with which feature is better than the other one you can imagine two very nice guys mark and jim can't you uh, as you can see we can characterize them uh, in point of view of four different types of statistical variables uh, discrete continuous nominal and ordinal these are measurable variables these are unmeasurable immeasurable variables and here we have the examples of the variables of each of the type. So we can characterize Mark and Jim by number of cars. Mark has one car, Jim has two cars, for example. Yeah, so this is an uh, integer number, yes. And integers are um, typical values of discrete variables salaries mark earn for example 2010.5 dollars per month and jim jim salary is about 3122.5 oh five dollars yes so continuous variables can take wide range of values can take the real number okay and now we move on to um to qualitative uh, variables I color is nominal yes because there is no gradation here mark maybe has um, brown eyes Jim has uh, green eyes and there is no gradation here but if we talk about the educational level yes Jim has a master degree in economics for example but mark has only uh, have ended only a primary school yeah so there is a gra gradation higher educational level uh, in hierarchy lays uh, above the primary educational level we are approaching the next example uh, exercise related to types of statistical variables and in this exercise uh, we are going to assign the following variables to the most most uh, re relevant groups why most? because uh, as you could notice this kind of division is just um, flexible or fluid yeah so um, there are some variables that can be assigned into for example two types of two or three types of uh, of 
statistical variables. Yes, so it depends of the it, de it depends on the um, measure tool and uh, point of view of the researcher. So let's start. First variable is SARS-CoV-2 cumulative cases. This kind of um, variable has uh, has a discrete character. Yeah, because it, it changes in discontinuously way. It takes uh, the integer numbers. Yeah, COVID symptoms like fever, cough. Yes, you chow, you have chow and something like that yes so this um, this um, variable has nominal character yeah because there is no gradation here and for sure it is qualitative household monthly income this kind of um, this kind of uh, variable has has sorry no uh, continuous character yes it changes in continuously way it takes a uh, takes the real number values yeah um, next uh, is a uh, number of children it has also discrete character similar to the cumulative cases and because we can have zero, one, two, and more kids, yes, we can't have, for example, one and a half children, yeah, one and a half children. It's it is impossible, yeah. So it changes in this continuous way. There is no um, our variable has no values between 0 and 1, between 1 and 2, so it changes in, in discontinuously where, so it means to uh, have jumps here. Okay, sex. You know, women and male and female, yes, so we have two sexes, yes, and it has nominal character uh, in a specific situation we can transform a nominal variable into a discrete variable if we utilize the codes like 0 and 1 0 for example for men yeah or male sex and female Or one yeah so this kind of coding uh, has discrete character on the margin great from course yes in Polish educational system to three three and a half four four point five and five yes so our uh, variable uh, takes only uh, a limited set of values yes one two three four five six we have six values yes so our attribute has has discrete character Yes, it changes in this continuously way. Yes, we have a house, but the set of variable values are limited, so it has discrete character. Age in a questionnaire. In a questionnaire. Yes, so we have we have to feel appropriate position in a questionnaire age so we write for example 32 yeah someone 
can heal it by 21. Yeah? So, for sure, it changes in uh, this continuously way, but we know in uh, um, in the reality, yes, uh, age has continuous character. Yes, because I can say that I have, for example, 22 years, 6 months, 28 days, and blah 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 hours. Yes, but we don't do that. Yes, actually, so typical, typically, age has a discrete character in a questionnaire, yes? Because we don't have to be so much accurate, yes? So we don't have to be so accurate. Uh, eye color, as we know, has it has nominal character, mock scale of mineral hardness. As you remember from that no geography, um, it has ordinal character, yes, from chalk to diamond, yeah, or we can also uh, assign it into discrete category yes one two three up to ten yes so it has dual character gdp per capita like the most of uh, economic variables it has continuous character uh, the same unemployment rate yes so both are continuous Hate in police description of the suspect. Yes, so police um, report that police reports that the suspect uh, uh, was tall or short. Yes, so it has uh, ordinal character. Of course, we can we can um, report. The, the, the height of the suspect using centimeters, yes? For example, 185 centimeters. So in that case, uh, we are dealing with discrete uh, variable. Yes, so as you can see, the, this kind of division is flexible. Time in general, yes? So, of course, it has continuous character, yes? we measure time in uh, uh, in continuously way of course by the moment of time yes for example years 2008 2009 if we are not so accurate yes so in, in that case we are talking about uh, discrete variable yes but in general in general, time has continuous color. Educational level. Yeah, the previous example, we can see an uh, order here. And the number of meshes in the dice roll. Yes, you know what I mean. Here we have meshes, yes. And how many... This is our attribute. How many values it has it can take six of course yes from one up to six so this kind of this kind of um, attribute uh, statistical variable has discrete character and here's your uh, wait a second, please. Here we have uh, first homework for you. So please do the same thing, but uh, on the example of different set 
of attributes. Fantastic! We have done two stages of the data analysis process. We have defined population and sample and we have formulated the research problem uh, using um, statistical variables. Yeah? So now it's time for data collection. At this stage, we are trying to collect a statistical material. You know, the results from the questionnaire, field questionnaire by some people, or maybe uh, we have downloaded uh, data taken from a statistical office. Yes? So this raw material is called statistical material and of course we can divide it into primary material collected by the researcher in the study yes own, own elaboration of the matter of uh, the material and uh, secondary uh, earlier uh, elaborated uh, by some entities like uh, statistical office. Yes, and here we have some examples. Uh, someone uh, investigated weekly spendings on alcohol in group A and here we have the results or more serious um, uh, research uh, which uh, was related to the population in the uh, next uh, following voivodeships in Poland. Yeah. And the next step is change the material into series. Tra it's to transform material into statistical series. So statistical series is uh, ordered or grouped, yes, statistical material by the researcher. So earlier we have no order, yes, this is our raw material. And now we are trying to order uh, the material, the statistical material and make some statistical series. Here we have the example of ordered statistical material. Now we are talking about the statistical series and we have two ways of ordering non ascending and non descending two ways of ordering non ascending means next values of our variable are uh, are not higher than the previous one and non-descending means next values of our variable are not lower than the previous one yes we have two basic methods of ordering and here we have the example of uh, of um, uh, non ascending ordering here we have the example of non descending ordering yes why here we have non prefix 
Why? Because sometimes we are dealing with the situation with when we have the same numbers. Yes, for example, 0, 10, 10, 2, 5. Yes, so if I say ascending on, descending, uh, if, if I if I uh, talking about ascending or descending ordering, here I have a problem with two tens. Yes, so it is safe to say non-ascending or non-descending. Yes, the example of non-ascending uh, will be 10, 10, 5, 2, 0 and non-descending 0, 2, 5, 10, 10, yes? And this is the solution of the problem with ascending and descending order. Statisticians assume that uh, we can distinguish several types of statistical service, like individual or specific uh, statistical series, frequency distribution series, cross-sectional series, time series, and pooled or panel data series, which means to combine cross-sectional and time series together. First goes individual statistic, st statistical series. In individual series, uh, all the values of our variable are known. Yes, we have detailed uh, information about the values which are taken by our variable. Full statistical information. Next, we have frequency distribution, but and dedicated to qualitative variables. So here, statistical material is ordered by the variance of qualitative mm, uh, of qualitative variable. Here we have qualitative variable, eye color, and we have three variants of eye color brown, blue, green, and number of students that are characterized by this kind of uh, color of eyes. Uh, next, we have frequency distribution related to a point series. Uh, this kind of uh, series is dedicated to uh, variables which uh, has discrete character, yes? Uh, in the situation when we have a limited set of values when our uh, variable takes only a limited set of values. And here we have the example of marks and um, grades from a course, yes, a number of students that, uh, that are characterized by the uh, final test mark. Next, we have frequency distribution interval series. Yes, this kind uh, of uh, statistical series uh, is um, appropriate, is dedicated to continuous variables. Yes, so when we have um, um, multi-variants of the values of our uh, variable, yeah? So, we can't um, present the data using related to point series, so instead of points, we use the intervals. Here, we have the example of open intervals, yes, which are separated, and going down, we increase the values of our uh, variable. Here we have the example when we have left closed intervals. Yes, they are also separated, but 
using open and closed intervals. And here we have our variable, which is height of the uh, of students, yes, and uh, appropriate number of students, which which uh, belong to the class of height, yes. And I must stress that this kind of statistical series is the most popular and will be often used during our classes. Next type, cross-sectional, where statistical material is ordered by uh, by the objects, yes? The objects uh, have their names, IDs, like here, regions, and in one moment of time we measure uh, we measure uh, we measure the value of a specific variable here, unemployment rate in, in August 2016. Cross-sectional ordered by the objects. All the objects are known, has their own names, and uh, are characterized by the values uh, of our variable in one specific moment in time. Here we have time series, yes, so we investigated the changes of uh, the changes of the dynamics of our variable in time. Yes, so we know the realization of our attribute in specific moments in uh, time. Here we have GDP per capita in fake uh, country utopia yes in thousand dollars and we can measure GDP per capita in each of the year this is the time series and the last one this this is uh, this uh, this series is kind of uh, combination um, when we combine time series and cross-sectional series together so we have the objects, for example, uh, from previous example, regions, yes, here, and uh, unemployment rate in next years in following regions. So this is an example of pulled cross-sectional, uh, pulled combined time and cross-sectional series. Every beginner statistician should know how to use operator of the sum and operator of the product. Um, operator of the sum and operator of the product are used in statistical series. So when we perform on them, uh, when we make some computations, we use often operator of the sum and operator of the product. So how to read the operator of the sum and operator of the product. We start with operator of the sum. This is a capital Greek letter, sigma, and we read it following. The sum, the sum from i equal one up to n of x i. So it means that we will sum up all the values of variable x. So in the first step, yeah, in the place of i, we take 1. So in the first step, we repeat x, which is a constant element of our sum and in uh, in place where we have i we take one value and this is all 
Yes, this is the sum. So in the next step, we uh, put here plus sign and constant element of the sum. Uh, uh, we increase uh, the values of i's from 1 up to n. We operate by natural numbers. So next natural number after 1 is 2. So in place where we have i, we take 2. And so on. Yes, because we have a lot of numbers between 1 and um, unknown n. Yes, so we use three dots plus the last one, which is x n. Yes, because this is the because this is the last value of i. The next example, the sum from i equal one up to n of x i y i. So in the first step we repeat x and y, constant elements of our sum, and in the place of i's we take one value. One value. Yeah? And so on. Plus sign. In the next step we take next value. Next value after 1 is 2. Next natural number. 2. Yeah? So we repeat constant elements and in the place where we have i, we take value 2. And so on, we have several um, values of x multiplied by y and at the end the last element of our sum will be from i equal 1, 2, up to n. Yeah, so the last value of i will be n. Here we have very similar operations, but instead of summing something, we uh, compute the product. And here we have capital letter, Greek letter P, which represents the product. How to read it? The product from j equal 1 up to k, for example, yes, because we, ca we, have, we can have here uh, a wide range of letters, yes? So it doesn't matter if we have j, i, a, b here or something else. The product from j equal 1 up to k of x, j. So, in the first step, in the first step, we write here a constant element, and in the place of uh, j, we put 1. Next, in the next step, yeah, we write uh, multiplication sign and the next value in our product will be x2 and so on three dots at the end we uh, compute the product using the last element which is x K. And in the example we have the sum from j equal 1 up to m of uh, xj to the power of 1 plus j.
So, in the first step, we repeat constant elements, which are x and uh, 1 plus, and in the place of j, we take 1. So 1 is here, and 1 plus 1 gives us 2. Yeah, so we can write immediately here 2, because 1 plus 1, j equal to 1 in the first step, is 2. And after that, multiplication sign, and in the next step, we repeat constant elements. So next natural number after 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 gives us 3, and so on, yeah, and the last, the last value if our product of in, the last value in our product is xm to the power of 1 plus m. Yes, because m is unknown. Now, I'm going to show you how to expand the following operators. Right? How to operate, operate on the operators. How to perform on the operators. How to um, how to make some computations using um, this kind of operators. So, first example, we have the sum from i equal 1 up to k of uh, xi minus, minus y to the power uh, squared, actually. So, in the first step, we repeat constant elements. Yeah, and uh, in the place where we have i, we take 1. And so on, this is the sum, so here I put plus sign, and in the next step I have x2 minus y squared. Yeah, so on. And the last element of uh, our sum will be x k minus y squared. Next example. The sum from i equal 1 up to n of n multiplied by i to the power of n. In the first step we repeat constant elements and in the place where we have i, we take one value. This is the sum, so next symbol will be plus. And next element of our sum will be n multiplied by 2 to the power of n. The last element of our sum will be n multiplied by n to the power of n. Of course, we can um, simplify our uh, sum in the way like that. In the next example, we have sum from, this is new element, from the sum from j equal 2 up to n of k uh, to the power of j divided by j minus 1. So in the first step, we repeat constant elements and we start using 
2 in the place of j. Yes, so k squared j minus 1, 2 minus 1. Yeah, so generally we have here k squared. Plus. In the next step, next number after 2 is 3. So here we have the cube of k divided by 2. 3 minus 1 is 2. And so on up to n. Yeah, so in the, the last element consequently is k to, to the nth power divided by n minus 1. And, okay, we can leave this example. All right. I have to shift up the screen. Now we have um, the product for the first time from z equal 1 up to 5 of z. So it's very simple. Yes, we have only one value that changes here. So we start with z equal 1 and in the next step we we insert here a multiplying sign and in the next step we have another value after 1 which is 2 and so on we multiply next natural numbers from 1 up to 5 so this is 5 factorial okay next example is very interesting because we have two sums yeah and in here we have uh, we have x with two uh, two values j a and i which uh, which change here so the sum from i equal 1 up to n of sum from j equal 1 up to k. Yes, as I said before, here we have uh, the subscript of i and j. Yeah, this is um, useful information uh, for those who uh, work with... Uh, with tables, yes. So, a j i uh, is responsible, for example, for rows, and j is responsible is the, is um, reflects to uh, the columns, yes. And we uh, can easily navigate uh, in the table, yes, using substrict i and j. So, let's start the sum. In the first step, we repeat uh, the sum from the left side. So, we repeat the sum from i equal 1 up to n. And we open the bracket. And in the bracket, we have what? We expand only this element. We forgot about the first sum. And we... Uh, perform only on this sum. So uh, let's check it out. The sum from j equal 1. So we repeat constant element and now uh, i is constant, yes? Yeah? Because here j changes here only j yeah from j equal one so we start with j equal one i is constant at the moment and x is constant at the moment yes this is the first step 
In the next step, uh, number after uh, j equal 1 is 2. Yes, so we take x i 2. Yes, plus three dots. Do you agree with me? x i and the last number is k. Okay. But we haven't finished yet. Now we have the sum of this kind of sums. Yeah, the sum of sums. So, in the first step, we have the sum from i equal 1 up to n of this kind of sum. So, everywhere when, where we have i, we are taking the value 1. Yes, we, in the place of i, we insert 1 everywhere in the whole sum. So, x, 1, 1, plus x, 1, 2, plus 3 dots, x, 1, k. Yeah? Yeah? changed into 1. This is the first step. In the second step, in the second step, next number after 1 is 2. So it will be x 2 1 plus x 2 2 plus 3 dots x 2 k. Yeah, and so on up to last number is n. So we have x n1, x n2, and at the end x n k. I needed some free space. Uh, we can uh, go to the next example. We have the product from j equal 1 up to k uh, of the sum from i equal 1 up to n from uh, of y i j. In the first step, we repeat the first operator, the operator of the product. And we are trying to expand, uh, to write an extension of uh, operator of the sum. So we open the bracket and we start from i equal 1. Yeah, so it means that in the place of i, i insert 1, yeah? In the place of i, I insert 1. i, j. j is constant at the moment because there is no j in the sum, yeah? And the next one, y, 2, because it changes, j doesn't change. J plus three dots plus the last element N and uh, J. Okay, and now we have the product of following sums. Yeah. So in the first step, we take the value of J equal one j equal 1 is everywhere here yeah 
So let's start. Y one one because J is for one. Y two one plus three dots plus Y N one. We close the bracket and we have multiplication sign yeah and we multiply another sum by another sum so now the next step next number after j equal 1 is j equal 2 so we have j uh, sorry, y uh, one two y two two and so on y and two close the bracket three dots multiplication sign multiplication sign and we have what y the last number is k so it is 1 k plus y 2 k plus 3 dots plus y and k and this is Okay, so anyway, we can do um, the last example where we have the sum of the products. Here is the product of the sum. Here we have the sum of the products. Let's start. We repeat the sum, sum from k equal 2 this time up to n plus 1 and here we extend spend uh, the operator of the product so we start with j equal 1 yeah so we repeat constant element um, okay and k is, at the moment is the constant element because here in the product the j changes only so in the place of j we put we insert 1 x1 to the power of k and this is the product so here we have multiplication sign x 2 k because next number after 1 j equal 1 is j equal 2 and so on here we have x uh, m to the power of k. Yeah, and now we have the sums. Uh, we have the sum of the products. Yeah. So in the first step, in every k we have at the beginning 2 so x i 2 multiplied by x 2 2 multiplied by x m squared plus because we sum products yeah the next step we have x 1 the cube of x1 multiplied by the cube of x2 and so on the cube of x m plus plus and the last product is x1 to the power of n plus 1 multiplied by x2 to the power of n plus 1 multiplied by xm to the power of n plus 1. Yeah, it's very simple as you can see.